Hello and welcome um, to this session, this V for Life cookery session. My name's Ollie. I'm a roving chef for V for Life or vegetarian for life. Uh, we go under two names these days because a lot of the cookery sessions we do are now for vegans as well as vegetarians. Uh, we are the only charity that support older vegetarians and vegans. That's anyone over the age of 50. And we are the only charity in the world that, that does this. So it's quite a unique um, place to work. Uh, we want to be the sort of go-to for uh, older vegetarians and vegans. We offer lots of advice. Uh, and in my job as a roving chef, I get to go around and give talks, um, cookery demos. Uh, we go to food festivals and we also give more specific training to chefs in care situations, for example, who might be struggling. We meet the most incredible chefs who are trained in the finest French cuisine, but they might be struggling with some vegetarian or vegan uh, options or, or be completely stuck with some new ingredients. So we're there to sort of help them and improve uh, recipes and improve menus nutritionally and also for, for taste. Um, you go on our website, we've got hundreds, thousands of recipes on there. Um, and we, off, we do publications throughout the year. We've got Christmas coming up. So we do as a Christmas publication here. And you can down these as a, download these as a PDF for free. Uh, so there's loads of ideas in this, for example, like mince pies, beetroot, chocolate brownies, Christmas stuff, cauliflower, all these options. Uh, that's particularly good. We do publications throughout the year, so it'd be like an Easter one and all sorts. We do guides, sort of an introduction to veganism, so someone might be completely stuck. So it will give you advice on not just food, but sort of clothing, ethics, uh, also cleaning products, makeup, things like that. So that's a really good sort of introduction. And then there's things like vegan baking. So this is one of our newer publications. And it's really good, really useful for sort of uh, egg replacements and uh, things that will give your, your bakes rise. And um, yeah, loads of interesting things in here. Also a section on cheap products within supermarkets like Just Roll Pastry, which is uh, vegan. Not, I don't think they set out to make it vegan, but it is just uh, vegan, probably through cheapness. <laughs> Uh, and things like vegan custards, cashew nut creams, and things like that. We've also got a calendar. We tend to release a calendar every year. Uh, and this will usually have seasonal recipes um, for each month. Christmas clementine cake, that's one of my recipes. That's particularly good. So yeah, have a look. And you can buy or download these for free on the website. Today's session is all about sourdough. So this is the ancient form of baking that only really uses three ingredients, flour, water, salt. It uses natural yeast from the air that surrounds us all the time. Lovely. Um, and it's the, yeah, one of the most ancient forms of, of making bread and bakes. And it's really simple. It is quite a sort of labored process, but if you've got the time and once you make a starter, which I'm going to sort of talk you through in a minute, um, you can really you know, churn these out quite easily um, in, a, in a day, a day or so. Um, so the first thing you're going to need for your starter is a sterilized jar, glass jar, either a kilner jar like this, which has got my starter in, uh, or one of these screw top ones that usually have pickles or something in. Uh, to sterilize it, just use some boiling water, leave it for a few minutes, or you can also pop them in the oven 100 degrees um, for about 10, 20 minutes as well. And then we're going to need some plain white flour, some scales, and 110 grams of flour. So I'm just finishing off a packet there. And I've got some more here. So we're either strong red flour or just a plain white flour. You can make it with wholemeal, um, but it might take a few more days. Um, and this recipe I'm showing you is specifically for a, a white flour. So 100 grams, 110 grams of flour. 
and then 120 grams of water. You might want to use filtered water depending on, on uh, how good your, your water is through the tap. And we pour that in. Give it a really good stir. Scrape all the sides down. And just make sure there's no lumps in there. And it'll be a sort of thick, porridgey consistency. Some people might add some raisins or a bit of grated fruit or something in there. Um, you really don't need to do that. You just want to leave it in a nice warm corner of your kitchen or if your kitchen's a bit cold, maybe a quiet corner of your living room or wherever, any, wherever you can find space. And that's it, we just mix that together. Make sure there's no lumps. And then we cover that with either a cheesecloth, a nut bag, or a thin tea towel, just so air can still get in there. Leave that rubber band around the top um, until you return to it the next day. Day two, going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to add 110 grams of flour, 120 grams of water, cover it up. Again, leave it for a day. Day three, the same. Day three, you'll notice, to see, notice some bubbles in there, a uh, little bit of rise, and it might start to smell a little bit. Depends, again, on the, the heat of your, your environment. Day four, same amounts again. This time it should have much more um, rise and start to smell a bit pungent, a bit sour. Same amount again. And then day five, it should be ready. Add the same amount again, your sourdough will have doubled. It'll be looking really active, lots of bubbles in there, really pungent. So add your flour and water for that day, and then it's ready. Give it a good stir every day, obviously. Make sure it's always smooth and pop that in the fridge. That's ready to use. This is my starter that I did made a couple of weeks ago. Essentially, your starter should last forever. Um, I used to have one. I'd had it for years, and then one day I dropped it on the floor, so it was ruined. Um, but you should have a nice, thick starter always. And if you're making a bread every week, for example, um, the amount you take out you want to add the same amount back. Um, and that's all you really need to know. If you're not making any bakes, any breads, um, you still really need to take some out and replace some every week. Otherwise, it can start to go a bit rancid. So you kind of, it's a bit of a commitment. You really need to look after and nurture your sourdough. Um, but yeah, once a week is fine. Just you know, take some out, a few tablespoons, replace with the same amount of flour and water. So I'm going to talk you through making a loaf. For this, you might want a proving basket, but it's really not essential. You can just use a large bowl with a tea towel in there, and we're going to we flour it really well. Two bowls. One for the starter, one for your, your dry ingredients. So for this loaf, we're going to use 75 grams of starter. And then about between 350, 380 millimeter, milliliters of water. And we pop the wet ingredients in the one bowl. Mix that together. And 
and then then our other bowl. Going to put our flour. So I'm making a sort of half and half loaf today. It's a mix of white and wholemeal. Actually, it's wholemeal spelt, but wholemeal flour works just just as well. So 300, about 300 grams of white flour. And then 230 grams of wholemeal. And then about 10 grams of salt. We probably want a fine salt for this, not a coarse one. And I'm using a, a uh, fine sea salt here. Give that a good mix. And then we're going to add the wet ingredients to this. So that's our starter and water mix. And we'll see what the consistency is like. Your starter might be slightly thicker, so you might want to add a bit more water because it would have held more weight when you're measuring it out. Or likewise, it might be a bit thinner and you want a bit more flour. So you just want to mix this together, bring it together in a, a bowl. I will get my hands in there in a minute. It's going to save you lots of money if you really get into sourdough making. Can be quite expensive these days in bakeries. And like I said, the only ingredients you're really using is flour, water, and salt, which are not expensive at all. So this is a really good consistency. It's a bit sticky, but not too sticky. It's not really coming away with my hands. And I can just grab the rest of the, the bits of flour around the edge. And I'm not, I'm not really kneading it, I'm just bringing it together into a bowl. Like so. So what we do then, we cover that with a towel, tea towel, or some cling film. Leave that for about an hour in a, in a warm place. When we return to it, we start this stretch technique. So we grab one part of it, hold it in the middle, and stretch. It's not going to work perfectly because ideally you want to leave it for a, an hour, like I say, and it will that means sort of increase the, the gluten and the stretchability. And we make our way round four times, stretch. Fold it into the middle, stretch, fold it into the middle, stretch, fold it into the middle. Cover it again, leave it 10 hours or overnight. When you return to it in the morning, it's going to have doubled at least in size. And we will do that technique again. So stretch into the middle, stretch into the middle. And this is what's really going to give it those air pockets as well as um, you get with a sourdough. Stretch into the middle four times. Leave it 15 minutes, come back, do that again. 
do that a total of four times, so for about an hour. Then leave it again, a couple of hours uh, covered, and that will give it final rise. But in this final rise, you want to use your proving basket. So we tip our um, sourdough out onto a floured surface, liberally coat our proving basket or our bowl with a uh, tea towel in with flour. I like to use a rice flour for this. Um, just gives the, um, the crust a bit more sort of crispness. So liberally dust it um, with your flour. You can use a gram flour as well, or, or just a regular flour if you, if you just want to do that, that's fine. And then pop it into the, the basket with your smooth side up, because we've been stretching it, folding it, and that's going to be our rough side. So smooth side in, and then we leave that. That's going to be our final prove, our final rise. Leave that for a couple of hours. So then it, it's going to not quite double in size, um, but it's going to increase um, about one and a half times. During that period, get your oven on to as high as it will go, so about 250. Um, get a pan in there, either a cast iron pan or one of these metal pans with a lid. Get it in there for half an hour before you're, you're ready to go. So it gets really hot. And then when your sourdough is ready, take it out really carefully. Turn the temperature down on the oven to about 220 or 210 um, if you've got a fan oven. Take off the lid and then pour the sourdough in. It'll just plonk shook them out, plonk right into the um, pan. And because that heat, it's not going to stick or anything into the oven. And then 30 minutes at the 200, 220 uh, degree temperature. Take off the lid after that, another 15 minutes, and that's really going to crisp up your um, the top. And then I forgot to mention as well, you should cut in, get a really sharp knife or even a razor blade, cut in a few um, scores into the top and that's going to allow your sourdough to let off steam and give it rise as well, allow it to rise. So when it comes out after the 45 minutes, you should have a nice risen loaf like this. It's got that characteristic, slightly sour smell to it. And a lovely toasted smell as well. And then should have some decent air pockets in there. This isn't the best. I'm still trying to really perfect it again. I had it nailed when I had my old starter, but just been getting back into it recently. Um, but yeah, there you go. That recipe is available on our website. Um, might have been um, difficult to follow that. Um, we also have a blog all about sourdough where that recipe is there as well for the starter and for that loaf. Um, it's sourdough September, whatever that means. There's always some kind of day or month for everything. So that's why I'm doing this session about sourdough. When you've got your loaf, you can really start to play around when you're perfecting your loaf. Play around with different amounts of flour, wholemeal, spelt flours. Um, you can even throw in some fruit in there, all sorts of different things. I'm gonna make a pancake recipe now. Um, with using the sourdough starter. Just to show you a few more options. So for this, I want 120 grams of starter. Okay. 
an egg. This isn't a vegan recipe. However, we do have lots of ideas and uh, egg replacements throughout the website and in guides. Um, you could use some flax seed in this, for example, make a, a flax egg, it's called, where you use a couple of tablespoons of flax and a tablespoon of water. So one egg. Good pinch of salt. While you're doing this, get your pan on. Sort of good medium heat. And then 65 millimeters of milk. I'm using that oat milk today. You could use whichever you prefer. It will all be the same. And then mix that up. After we've added our flour, of course. So you could add wholemeal again for this, or I'm going to use some white flour in this, I think. So 100 grams of flour. Give it a little stir before we get the blender in there. And ideally, we'd want to leave this for about 10, 20 minutes before we use it. But I'm going to use it straight away. You could even add a touch of sweetener in there, some maple syrup, or a touch of sugar. Touch of baking powder as well. So ideally we'd leave this for about 10-20 minutes and then just before we come to use it stir through just a dash or teaspoon of baking powder to give it a bit more rise. If you're not using an egg you can add a bit more baking powder. So it's a lovely thick butter mix. And like I say, ideally you're going to leave that for about 10 minutes. I'm obviously not going to do that. That was nice and warm. And then I'm going to use some coconut oil vegetable oil or a little bit of butter if you prefer and just about a teaspoon of this just to sort of coat the bottom depending on the size of your pan take a bit of that out make sure the bottom's coated and then about three tablespoons of the pancake mix because it's quite a thick pancake mix, you can kind of spread it and form it into that shape. 
because um, it's got the sourdough mix in, I think it makes particularly good savoury pancakes. So if you're going to enjoy that with cooked breakfast or something. But equally, sweet ones are good. These make really good blueberry pancakes, or I couldn't find blueberries today, so I've got some raspberries. So just a few raspberries, squish that into the top. I could actually find blueberries, but they were from Peru. So I decided to get some British raspberries. And then let's cook that in the pan for a few minutes. You start to see bubbles rising. And have a quick peek. And it's got a lovely golden. You can see that lovely golden on the side. Flip it over. We're going to do that for another minute or so. Smells delicious. Maple syrup, perhaps some yogurt, add some Greek yogurt. Oh, I really like coconut yogurt, it's particularly good. And you can probably fit a few more in the pan, like I say. And then that is done. Build yourself a nice big stack. Big dollop of yogurt. Nice, good globe of maple syrup. Oops. A few more raspberries on the side or blueberries if you decided to go with that. And then you've got a really delicious pancake mix. So it's a really good way if you don't fancy making a sourdough every week. You still need to replace that starter so you can make some pancakes on a Saturday morning or something. Let's give this a little taste. Mm, so, so good. A lot like sort of more gooey than regular pancakes. And really, really good. Um, further reading, this is book I refer to a lot. There's lots of different sourdough recipes in there, different loaves. And I think this pancake recipe is actually adapted from it. It's called Healthy Baking by Jordan Bork. Um, I've referred to this book a lot over the years. Loads of really nice recipes, a mix of vegan and vegetarian recipes in there. Um, so yeah, there's lots of uh, different sourdoughs, for example, fig, almond and cinnamon sourdough, which I've tried once and is really, really good. So you can really play around once you've got that sourdough uh, starter perfected and you're really starting to perfect your, your loaf as well. So thanks a lot for joining me. If you go on our website, we've got loads more recipes and we've also got the blog on sourdough. It's called Sourdough September which will give you the, the starter recipe for today and the loaf recipe today. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm just going to check if there's any questions. No questions. If you want to get in touch, uh, then please do. You can also get in touch. It's ollie at vegetarianforlife.co.uk. So send me an email. Um, thanks very much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.